Hey all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we're going to be looking at the 2019 AP Calculus AB free response questions. And um, as usual, if um, I find any mistakes in my problems, um, check the description below for any corrections or uh, empty. And there's a link to the PDF solutions in the description below. So let's start with this one. Uh, so fish enter a lake, enter a lake at a rate modeled by the function e if t is given by this, and they leave by L of t is given by this. Both E of t and L of t are measured in fish per hour, and t is measured in hours since midnight. How many fish enter the lake over a five-hour period from midnight? Okay, um, so um, entering, um, that would be the integral of the rate that they're entering. E of t dt. And we would be integrating from 0 to 5. And that's how many people would enter. Now, the way I would do this on my calculator, let me pull up my calculator here, is um, let me clear that. I like to type in the equations into, on my TI calculator, I like to type the equations into um, each of these, and I've already pre done them. So I, I put in for y2, I have my L of t here. Uh, and for y1, I've put in my e of t, which is 20 plus 15 sine pi x over 6. And the reason I do this is because then it makes it easier to just simply check to make sure I've entered in the equation uh, correctly. And then I can do math 9, which is to do an integral from 0 to 5. I do vars, y vars function, y1. And then I do this over dx. And I get this is equal to 153 fish. All right, part B, what is the average number of fish that leave the lake per hour? The average number that are leaving is, um, average value for leaving is one over five, integral from zero to five, L of T dt. Because the integral of L of T dt is how many would be leaving. And so we're doing the average rate. They want the no, average number of fish that leave the lake per hour. So it's the average rate that they're leaving at. So you sum up the total that are leaving, you divide that by five hours. And so now I can do this 1 divided by 5, math 9. And I'm integrating from 0 to 5. And I did this as uh, my second y varus function, number 2, over dx. I get this is uh, 6.06. Um, six fish per hour. Okay. C, at what time is the greatest number of fish in the lake? And justify your answer. So um, we got to look at the rate of change of the fish that are entering. right? So if I look at the rate of change of the fish entering and leaving, there it's equal to the number of fish entering minus the number of fish leaving. And so what I, what I want, the number of fish, f of t, is the integral of r of t dt. Or uh, we'll say r of, we'll use a different letter, r of x dx. And I'm integrating from 0 to t, plus how many there are initially. This is sort of a general expression of what I would say is the number of fish. Now, we don't actually know what it starts out at. So let's actually look at a plot of the r of t. And let's, let's try to infer what's happening. So what I did here is I plotted y3, y1 minus y2 as, um, as y3. And then I graph it. Well, let's, let's mix our window. I'm going to go from 0 to 8 and then negative 50 to 50. So I graph this. So this is a plot of R of T. Now this is not the plot of the number of fish. This is the plot of R of T. So I don't want to look at the maximum of this, but I want to see what's happening. So in the first time period, you see like there's more people, there's more fish that are, uh, we're increasing the number of fish in the lake until we hit here and then we're decreasing the number of fish in the lake. And this is the window from zero to eight. So this is going to be my maximum here. Why, you, you could think about, well, maybe I need to check the beginning point. Well, like during this time, more fish are entering. So whatever the value here is, like for a candidate's test or for like, you know, checking the different values. Because when you find absolute max, typically you want to check the endpoints. I want to do f of 0. I want to do f of uh, 8. And then I also want to check any point in between, any critical values between where r of t is equal to 0 f prime of t is equal to 0, my critical points, and that's when r of t is equal to 0. And so I can calculate that 0 here. I can do second calculate. 
uh, the zero. Say there, right bound. Oh, let me make it eight. And then guess there, whatever. Just make it take longer. And so my other critical value is t is equal to 6.204. Now this ends up being my maximum because at zero, right, um, we we'll definitely have more here because all of this area tells me how many fish have entered or have the, the, the net change in the number of fish is positive. And once I go beyond here, the net change of the fish would be negative. So f of eight is definitely gonna be smaller than this one, right? And so that this is where the maximum occurs. Um, yeah. At what time t? t equals that. All right, is the rate of change in the number of fish increasing or decreasing at times 5 a.m.? And here's the rate of change. So they just want to know, is the rate of change in the number of fish increasing or decreasing? So what's increasing or decreasing? Rate of change. What's the rate of change? I want to know R of t. R of t is the rate of change in the number of fish. If I want to know if it's increasing or decreasing, I need to know what the derivative at 5 is. So do math 8. Um, I'm going to derivative with respect to x of y3. Evaluate it at 5. That's equal to negative 10.7, which is less than 0. And so it's decreasing. All right. Oh, sorry. Uh, the calculator was covering a part of um, the picture here. Um, but... I don't think there's that much to worry about. Um, sorry about that. Sorry, I was covering up over here. Over here, I was just simply drawing. Um, I was drawing a table of like different table values, basically saying like when I do when in, in in general when you're doing a maximum test, you're always doing the endpoints as well as any critical points. But we explained why the endpoints are not necessary because they didn't actually give you the initial value, right? Like where it started out at. So you can actually compare any of those points, but you can infer that that this critical maximum is going to be larger than the two endpoints there. So hope you found that helpful. Uh, let me know how you did in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.